Hi, the topic of discussion is very interesting. This is, we know that there are various physical forces is applied over the lungs and the chest. And uh, we all know the lungs are situated inside the chest wall. So the lung has its own physical properties and the chest has also its own elastic or the required properties. So how this lungs and the chest together brings about the pulmonary ventilation. This is called the mechanics of respiration. In the last session, we have discussed about different uh, inspiratory muscles, mainly the diaphragm and also the external intercostal muscles, how it brings about the inspiration and the expiration is completely a passive, passive process and the quiet expiration is a passive process. And also we have discussed about the intraalveolar pressure and interpleural pressure and the differences between two is a transpulmonary pressure. Now the next. Recapitulation of the last uh, session, uh, we are going to discuss about the intraalveolar pressure and the interpleural pressure. Here we can see a graph. Here, actually, this is the tidal volume. This is the uh, inspiration and this is the expiration. The inspiration uh, is a uh, this is the upward stroke, expiration is a downward stroke, and it is we know all that tidal volume is 500 milliliter. Now, what is this? This is the alveolar, intraalveolar pressure. Intraalveolar pressure at the beginning of the inspiration it is a zero. When the middle of the inspiration it goes negative, again it comes to the positive at the end of the inspiration. Expiration it becomes positive and comes to the zero at the end of the expiri expiration. While in case of intrapleural pressure, the intrapleural pressure is a pressure in between the two layer of the uh, parietal and the visceral pleura. This is always negative. The, this is starts around the minus 5 centimeter of water at the beginning of the inspiration. It goes below uh, minus 7 centimeter of water and, uh, and the end of the inspiration. At the end of the expiration, again, it comes to the normal value. So what is the importance of this two pressure? The difference between this alveolar pressure and the pleural pressure is called the transpulmonary pressure. And this transpulmonary pressure is always a positive pressure. And this pressure is responsible for the expansion of the lung, which helps the air to go in. Now we are going to know the various factors which is uh, mainly responsible for a pulmonary ventilation. First factor is the elastic properties of the lung. Next, lung compliance, surface tension, elastic properties of the chest wall alone, and airway resistances. So these are the uh, uh, physical factors which helps pulmonary ventilation each or sometimes together. Lung and the chest wall, it acts together to bring about the uh, pulmonary ventilation and the surface tension we'll discuss in this chapter it is very important to maintain the compliance and the airway resistance we are going to discuss about the first properties of the lung what is that the elastic property or the elastic require of the lung here one diagram this is the bronchial wall okay and around the bronchial wall you can see this are uh, the alveolar wall this is the alveolar wall. This is one alveolus and this is the sac. This white part is a sac of the alveolus. And here, these are the elastic fiber. And this elastic fiber is mainly the interstitium, makes the interstitium of the lungs tissue. So uh, when because of the presence of this elastic fiber, this has a required property. Means you think about the balloon. Whenever you are blowing, it is taking a shape and whenever the, you are leaving the pressure it is coming back to its normal position or you can think about this line on stockings whatever you can wear it in any fit and whenever you are removing from one limb of the fit it is coming back to the normal position because of the fibers are situated like this so it can stretch it can uh, distend and then again come to back to the normal position and elastin fiber forming the interstitium resists the overstretching 
and also it helps in recoil and it accounts only for the one fourth of the elastic resistance this is very important elastic resistance is one fourth is done by only by the uh, elastin fibers and the rest of the resistance are done by the surfax surfactant now the next factor that is called the lung compliance compliance is nothing but the stretchability of the lung how much lung can expand or stretch by its own properties is called lung compliance the extent of which the lung expand for the each unit of increase in transpulmonary pressure just remember it it is transpulmonary pressure not any other pressure so total compliance for the both lung together is 200 milliliter of air per centimeter of water change of the transpulmonary pressure so here it is very important if it is a both lungs then the compliance lung compliance is more that is a 200 ml if it is a one lung or the few part of the lung is not working because of the collapse so what will happen the compliance the stretchability of the lung will decrease so this is the importance you have to know it is a its own inherent property of the stretch per unit pressure changes the volume how much it is changing increasing that per unit pressure change is called lung compliance now we are going to discuss about how we can measure the compliance or the static compliance and how can we can graphically represent the measurement of this lung compliance so first of all what is static lung compliance when the compliance is measured uh, of a lung when there is a no air flow how you can measure we can explain later and but before that the graphical representation of that and uh, the graphical representation of this static lung compliance is called inflation and deflation pressure volume curve this is actually the pressure volume curve why it is called pressure volume curve in the x axis it is a transpulmonary pressure unit is centimeter of water and there is a always positive whereas the y axis is lung volume there is a percentage of the tlc or the total lung capacities now at the very beginning you just see and this is the red line is the frc or the relaxed state of the lung there is no air is passing at this state the particular volume uh, particular volume if you start taking the measurement of the air alveoli volume and the pressure changes the graph will come like this so what is the first stage first stage is the stage of stable lung volume when the no air base is open and though the trans transpulmonary pressure is increasing the volume is in is not increasing at the level of eight centimeter of water transpulmonary pressure few airways are open and it started increasing the volume started increasing and that is a stage two stage of opening of airways after that the most of the airways are open and there is a linear expansion of opening of the airways which increases the lung volume this is the steepest part of the inflation curve and the fourth stage is when it reaches to the limit of airway inflation there is no increase in lung volume now the thing the interesting thing is when the a lung is recoiling again or the deflate deflating what is happening the graph is not following the before pathway it is away from that and because of this this is called because of this inflation curve and the deflation curve doesn't matches together it doesn't follow the same pathway this difference is called hysteresis hysteresis means lagging be behind now you can see here the steepest part of the lung from where the lung volume is increasing by increasing of the transpulmonary pressure from this part you can measure the calculate the lung compliance and on this red line a first line you can see a small uh, green graph which is the actual lung compliance when the person is normally breathing this is such a small curve when the person is normally breathing by uh, the experimental uh, setup how can we calculate or measure the static compliance that we are going to know 
and what is the formula of the compliance we can get from the graph. The calculation of the static lung compliance, the importance is when there is no air flow or zero air flow and or uh, artificially we have obstructed the airway artificially not in by the any disease we can calculate in a experimental setup okay now this is the delta v is the change of the volume delta p is change of trans pulmonary pressure whereas the compliance is equal to delta v by delta p means unit pressure changes due to unit pressure changes how much volume is changing this is called compliance or the stretchability of lung so static compliance value is 200 ml per centimeter of water from the last graph we can get this inflation curve and the deflation curve and we can calculate the difference of if we plot this one pressure changes and one volume changes like p1 and p2 if we take the graph like this so difference whatever we are getting from the steepest part of the inflation curve we can get the compliance value so this way we have to calculate the static lung compliance now we are going to know about the factors which are responsible for uh, compliance or affecting the lung compliance first factor the distensibility or the elastic recoil how much lung is uh, elastic or how much the lung can stretch the distance will be the compliance will be more stiff lung has less compliance or stretchability is obviously it will be less in case of fibrotic lung where the stretchability is less next is lung volumes think about the balloon when the balloon is at the small uh, size you can stretch more you can blow it more so when the balloon is uh, in smaller size the stretchability is more it's same thing it is happening with the lung also the lung volume is small the stretchability is higher but when the balloon has reached its maximum size you cannot stretch more than that the same thing it is happening with the lung also the higher the volume the stretchability is less next is the lung size i told at the very beginning the 200 ml per centimeter of water it is with the, both the lung if the half of the lung is not working or in any case of the disease where the one part of the one lobe of the lung is fibrotic or it is there is an accumulation of the fluid then the stretchability of the lung will also decrease and the let less and the, not the least is the surface tension inside the alveolar which is very important factor which control the lung compliance we are going to discuss later half of the session now we should know uh, why we are so much bothered with the compliance of the lung what happens uh, what change changes it happens with the different diseases the clinical significance of the lung compliance see this graph this is a transpulmonary pressure of the side this is the lung volumes this is the normal compliance of the lung if it has been plotted with a different volume the curve has come like this but what has happened in the emphysema there is obstructive uh, pulmonary diseases the elasticity is completely lost and the lung has become baggy type and the compliance is a maximum it's the highest in case of emphysema it's a kind of obstructive lung disease whereas a restrictive disease the lung cannot stretch only and the compliance is least is almost flat so this is the importance of knowing the lung compliance when when which disease that it, it is it has a, a, a normal stretchability or it has increased or decreased like lung chest is, has also required properties but uh, which is in opposite direction lung is trying to require inside where the chest is trying to uh, require outside so it balances each other so what is the interaction and how it helps in pulmonary ventilation at the functional residual capacity the elastic recoil of the lung and the chest balance each other now you have to think why we are talking about frc level frc is end of quiet inspiration after that end of quiet expiration and the no air is passing through that at that level inside the lung there is an expiratory reserve volume plus the reserve volume is there this much amount of air is there in that level lung is trying to recoil inside and the chest is trying to recoil outside outward so it is 
it is creating a increase intrapleural pressure so in that level the in pulmonary ventilation will be better now what is happening at this FRC, FRC means that level the chest wall and the lung have an equal recoil but in the opposite direction we can see the same thing in with a graphical representation and this graphical representation is called the relaxation pressure volume curve of a lung why it is called relaxation pressure volume curve because of that you see relaxation pressure means this is at that level the i told before there is uh, no muscle is contracting and no air is passing through that at that uh, whole lung is lung and the chest in, in the relaxed state in that position this is the resting respiratory level and this is the frc so this curve name has been given relaxation pressure volume curve now you see again this is the transpulmonary pressure this is the zero level this is a minus way this is a positive this is a transpulmonary pressure here is a this is the vital capacity the airway pressure this is the airway pressure now the, here is the lung and the chest wall compliance curve or the pressure volume curve what we have discussed before now this is lung alone this is the lung alone the compliance is when this both together it balances if the compliance curve come at the middle but the, when the lung alone there is a compliance is more the stretchability the lung alone can stretch more if the lung has taken outside of the chest wall it has been experimentally proved now the stretch chest wall has also a elastic recoil which is in opposite direction the curve itself it is telling that it is in the opposite direction so it balances at the frc level and this curve is called relaxation pressure volume curve now we are going to discuss about another kind of uh, compliance what is that that is called dynamic compliance now you see uh, static compliance we have we know that there is uh, compliance has been measured when there is no air flow now the dynamic compliance is little bit different still here the change in the lung volume per unit change in pressure this is till here it is a static compliance but in the presence of the flow means it is time dependent so when the compliance become a time dependent or dependent on the flow of the air through the airway this compliance is called the dynamic compliance clear and now what are the components of that first component is the chest wall compl compliance which was there for the static compliance also then the lung tissue compliance and another thing it should included in this dynamic compliance is airway resistance you think airways is like a tube the air is passing through the tube and when the air molecule is passing through the wall of the airway there will be frictional frictional flow and this friction will decrease the flow rate and the decrease in the flow rate what will happen the less amount of the air will enter into that and the stretchability will be less so the airway resistance also depends it's a factor for this dynamic compliance which was not for the static compliance frequency dependence and the dynamic compliance is due to what is the frequency because i told this is a, depend on the flow or the respiratory rate the pressure contribution from the air resistance or the impedance of the air which which i discussed that is a airway resistance i am telling okay and another one is a dynamic compliance decreases when there is increase in the respiratory rate you just think suppose the my respiratory normal respiratory rate is 12 to 16 per minute now if i <laughs> breathe like this so what is happening i am taking less amount of the air inside it is going and the alveoli are getting less stretched so the dynamic compliance itself it is less when there is an increase in respiratory rate so this is important how can you calculate you can calculate the dynamic compliance equal to the uh, static compliance plus airway resistance airway resistance we'll discuss later what is that and how much is that now the very important factor which is responsible for the pulmonary ventilation 
or the lung compliance is a surfactant or surface tension, the relation between the surface tension and the surfactant which is present in the alveoli. Now first for the first of that we have to know what is surface tension. Now this is a droplet on a leaf. Now the lots of water molecule are staying together on the air and liquid interface. Now, how can I define surface tension? The force that pulls the surface molecule of the water together in an air-liquid interface. Means in this uh, droplet, there is a lots of air water molecule and this water molecule are staying together because of the tension inside of the all uh, water molecules when there is a air outside is air atmospheric air and the liquid there is an interface this is called the surface tension now a little more discussion about this uh, surface tension how the intermolecular attraction happens now in this diagram we can see here there is a air and liquid interface there is a water molecules and each way each water molecules is attracted to each other they are not going away and this is called cohesiveness now what is happening here this is another diagram you can see this is a water molecules this are the everywhere there is attraction okay and this where there is a air and liquid interface this part this is missing this is not there because water molecule is not there instead of there there is a air so what is happening the force is directed to the interior of the medium for the upper layer of the water molecule you just take it this is the upper layer of the water molecules this this layer this is the upper layer of the water molecule you see this is attracted to this one but for this one it is not there upper one the same thing it is missing so this missing forces is trying to crunch the layer of the air mo water molecule or the liquid molecule so when there it should be there, there should be air and liquid interfaces must otherwise this crunch or the force towards the center it won't be there and that's why in definition you have to say there is a air and liquid interface now we can uh, express the surface tension by the laplace law what is laplace law laplace law uh, states that p equal to 2t by r now what is p p is collapsing pressure or the transmural pressure means uh, it try to uh, collapse the lung alveoli here in case of al lungs t is a surface tension and r is a radius okay now this is a diagram you can see we can express with this this is the diagram of a alveolus or the schematic diagram of a alveolus here we know there is a thin layer of water inside the alveolar wall clear and there is a air or the gas so there is a air and liquid interface now each molecule by the surface tension definition it is trying to collapse each other or attract each other and this whole thing sheet of this whole water molecule is trying to collapse the alveoli and just see here if the surface tension is more so transmural pressure or the collapsing pressure will be more and another thing the radius is inversely proportional with the, this so what is happening radius if it is less so collapsing pressure will be more so smaller alveoli because of the surface tension it is trying to collapse Here we can uh, explain with the schematic diagram the importance of the radius, alveolus radius on the uh, uh, surface tension. So what is happening here we can see there is a two alveolus that is connected with each other by the airways. Now uh, hypothetical situation it has been locked in between. There is a pulley inside which has been air cannot pass from here to here and to smaller to bigger and bigger to smaller so in this situation what is the collapsing pressure in between this two so you see two t is a constant that is a 70 dynes per centimeter and the radius for this bigger one is 0 0.01 centimeter compared to this is 0 0.005 centimeter so the by the calculation the collapsing pressure for the bigger one is 
14 centimeter of water whereas a collapsing pressure in the smaller one is a 28 centimeter so this smaller radius has a more tendency to collapse but if means when there is when according to the lap loss twice much pressure is needed to keep the smaller bubble to inflate now if this pulley or this is stopcock is open what will happen immediately because it is it is nature the collapsing pressure is more what will happen this will the air will go to the bigger one so the smaller wind will be much smaller or more smaller and it will collapse and causes the atelectasis of that but whereas this bigger one will infl inflate more so it is not right situation but bod our body has taken care of this so what is that for that we have to know the presence of the surfactant in the alveolar wall now what is surfactant how surfactant decreases the surface tension with the schematic diagram we can get to know the surfactant is a molecule which is secreted from the alveoli type 2 pneumocyte we'll discuss later the what is happening you see this is air and liquid interface this is a water molecule these are the water molecules trying to get it inside but in between if this surfactant molecules are there it is breaking the chain between two a water molecules so what is happening the surface tension which was trying to collapse the alveoli now it has been broken so surfactant reduces the surface tension by decreasing the density of the water molecule at the air water interface clear and because of the hydrophobic tail this is the hydrophobic tails which away from the water pulls the surfactant molecule upward and the resultant vector is very minimal so in the surfactant is a molecule which decreases the surface tension and maintains the stability and is very much in importance for the important for the stretchability of the lung which maintains the inflated alveoli as in the last slide we have seen that there, there is a surfactant molecule has a two parts one is a hydrophobic and the hydrophilic hydrophilic ends are embedded in the water or the liquid molecule whereas a hydrophobic is away from this so you should know the what is a composition this is very much important any difference in the composition will decrease increase the surface tension and the, it may affect the lung compliance so this is very important the pulmonary surfactant 80 percent is complied of this uh, lipid molecules a dipamethyl phosphatidylcholine dppc is the most important factor or constituents of the surfactant it is about 60 percent of this other is a glycerol 10 percent is neutral lipid okay this is phospholipid this are the neutral lipids and there is a protein are there that is very important this maintains also immunity and this is 10 percent of the surfactant protein and you have to know what the types of this surfactant proteins one is a b d and c so a and d is hydrophilic means it is towards the water molecules and b and c is hydrophobic now where the surfactant is synthesized from as we know there are two types of uh, pulmonary uh, uh, cells are type cells are there one is a type one uh, pneumocyte and uh, which is mainly the lining epithelium and another one is type 2 pneumocyte the type 2 pneumocyte this is a type 2 pneumocyte the number of the type 2 pneumocytes is less this is mainly responsible for synthesis of uh, surfactant and this surfactant precautions like the permitted uh, glucose these are collected from blood and then packed inside in the mitochondria mainly dipamethyl phosphatidylcholine is synthesized in the mitochondria whereas the protein molecule spa b c d they are synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum both this together packed into this golgi apparatus and then come to the tubular myelin and the tubular myelin continuously secretes this surfactant molecule where there is a air and liquid uh, interface so by step we can uh, uh, go now by the flow chart we can explain the steps of synthesis the first is the substrate molecules like the permitted choline and the glucose these are collected from the blood by the type 2 pneumocyte 
there's this is mainly synthesized in the mitochondria dipamethylphosphatidylcholine while in the endoplasmic reticulum this uh, protein molecules are synthesized dppc and dpcc and the proteins are packaged in the golgi apparatus they are stored in the uh, ultimately formed uh, surfactant are stored in the lamellar bodies lamellar bodies from the type 2 pneumocyte are discharged towards the surface of the alveolar epithelium by the exocytosis process the lamellar body materials are converted into tubular myelin and the tubular myelin forms a phospholipid film surfactant on the alveolar epithelium now a few important facts regarding uh, surfactant and uh, the regulation of synthesis is very important what are the factors which regulates the synthesis is very important the hormonal factors a uh, few hormones which has affect on the synthesis of uh, surfactant actually the lung is the uh, last organ which has to be matured in the gestational period the, if the total gestational period is 38 weeks actually the lung is uh, matured around 34 weeks and the surfactant also starts producing in that period so if the baby is born before this week means the before the 34 week that means it, if it is a premature baby there is a chances of uh, having surfactant is very less and the lungs cannot inflate in that premature babies <clears throat> the disease we will discuss later the what is the hormonal factors which is responsible for the maturation this glucocorticoids actually the end of the gestation the glucocorticoid increases in the maternal circulation which helps in the synthesis and the maturation of the surfactant thyroxine also the maternal hypothyroidism affects the surfactant synthesis insulin also promotes the synthesis whereas a diabetic mother which has less insulin in their body they has a baby they have usually baby with the less surfactant and the protein in the surfactant is very important if there is a protein less less protein in the body for the maternal blood and then the surfactant is pabd that won't produce a normal amount and stretching of the lung is very important when the baby born first time they starts crying and the alveoli stretch and the the type 2 pneumocyte gets stimulated and starts secreting uh, surfactant so increases decreases the surface tension and exercise also exercise means there is a stretching of the lung stretching of the alveoli stimulation of the pneumocytes and secretion of the surfactant now the functions of the surfactant is very important it prevents the lung collapse obviously we have already discussed it decreases the surface tension so collapsing forces are decreased and it decreases the lung collapse and promotes the alveolar stability uh, if the stability the lesser uh, diameter uh, alveoli cannot uh, uh, collapse because of this presence of this uh, surfactant helps to prevent the lungs edema actually the surface tension if it is increased it drags the fluid from the uh, pulmonary vessels and drags the fluid pulmonary vessels and there is an accumulation of fluid just uh, uh, besides the alveoli and this is called the pulmonary edema if the surfactant is not there the surfactant if it is there in the alveoli which decreases this dragging pressure of this uh, blood vessels to the interstitial space and that way it decreases the lung edema and kills the alveoli completely dry and decrease the work of breathing obviously uh, if the alveoli is smaller in di <coughs> diameter what it will happen it will the lung has to work more to inflate it so if it is uh, surfactant is there the diameter will be stable and the work done will be less the immunity the spb and t acts as a part of in innate immunity and it also promotes the phagocytosis clinical importance we have discussed uh, the lung has the lung is the last organ which gets mature uh, at the late stage of gestation and the premature baby suffers from infant respiratory distress syndrome what is that there is a collapse of the lungs due to deficiency of the surfactant in the premature baby and what is the treatment the phospholipid inhalation so the inhale inhale phospholipid will produce a surfactant and a synthetic surfactant otherwise 
inhalation of the in, in a synthetic surfactant and the glucocorticoid therapy which also promotes the production of the surfactant uh, when air flows in airways there are uh, different types of airflow happens uh, usually the normal type of airflow is is streamlined flow and uh, when there is uh, increase in rate of flow means because of the respiratory rate is increased so this normal streamlined flow converted to uh, turbulent flow or sometimes when there is a diameter of the airway decreases because of the that decrease suddenly uh, from a larger uh, airway to a smaller airway the flow of the uh, air will increase because of the kinetic energy there is a uh, the force is also increased and it become turbulent so and the type of the flow inside the air airway is turbulent flow so uh, what is happening the this is the diagram of a different type of flow inside one is the laminar flow there's a streamline flow or the laminar flow this is the transitional flow when there is the air is flowing in the different divisions of the airway in between one airway to another airway when it is going in between there is a turbulent turbulent in turbulence in this air flow and then again streamline again turbulent and in the case of the larger airway there is the air is very turbulent and it create noises so if we put stetho over here trachea or the larger bronchi if we take a deep breath we can hear the sound actually this uh, streamlined flow doesn't produce any sound according to the reynolds number reynolds number if it is more than 3000 because of the rate of this flow increases what will happen the it uh, it becomes turbulent and it produces noises now airway resistance uh, it actually follows the hagen foisley law airway resistance a uh, little bit we have discussed before the air molecule when it is passing through the uh, air tube uh, the frictional force with those uh, friction between the air molecules and the tube there is a impedance is creating and it decrease the rate of the flow inside the air tube so how it affects it actually what is uh, Hagen's proposal let's state that the flow equal to pi into the difference between the length of the air tube into the radius in the fourth power with the length uh, inversely proportional with the length of the tube so here the airway resistance is expressed as a centimeter of the water per liter per second it's very important and uh, the airway resistance is directly proportional with the fourth power of the radius that means the radius if it is 50 percent decrease the flow airway resistance will increase by 16 times and uh, it is inversely proportional with the length of the airways so it is clinically very important if the why we are concerned about the airway resistance because of the uh, obstructive pulmonary diseases where there is a radius decreases okay when the radius is decreased what is happening there is a uh, airway resistance is also increasing and this flow rate is also uh, increasing and ultimately uh, what is happening there is a turbulence in the flow and it produces very some very much a noisy breathing and there is it work of breathing is also increased because of the airway resistance is increasing in case of asthma the work of breathing is high than the normal breathing the factors which affects the airway resistance first is the diameter already we have discussed if the diameter is less the airway resistance increases the lung volumes if the lung volume is more than the airway resistance is less means that during inflation period when the person is in, in taking uh, air inside it is inflating the lung volume is increasing airway resistance is decreasing and airway resistance is increasing when the person is expiring so mostly during the obstructive lung disease the airway gets reduced during the expiratory phase this is very important clinically then bronchial smooth muscle tone 
there is an autonomic control there is parasympathetic and sympathetic parasympathetic increases the strong tone so airway resistance increases whereas the sympathetic through the beta 2 receptor it decreases the uh, tone of the muscle and it dilates the uh, airway so air resistance falls due to sympathetic and the humoral factors the beta 2 adrenergic receptor causes the dilatation of the airway and drugs the beta 2 adrenergic receptor agonist the salbutamol usually prescribed for uh, asthma people and the environmental factors the dust and the smoke who are allergic to this uh, environmental factors this increases the secretion of the mucus by the goblet cells which is present in the uh, respiratory tract and also secretes histamine which histamine causes the bronchoconstriction which increases the airway resistance and the viscosity and density of the inspired air that means the density when viscosity increases when the air becomes cold and this air cold air causes the increase increases the airway resistance there that's why the asthmatic attacks happens in the winter season and in the morning when the viscosity air is very high the phases of res uh, respiration forceful expiration increases the uh, uh, airway resistance that we have uh, discussed because this asthmatic attack and the, or the airway resistance or the radius of the uh, airway it decreases during the expiratory phase the last factor which helps in pulmonary ventilation is the interdependence of the lung alveoli uh, here we can see there are lots of lung alveoli are interconnected the wall are interconnected with each other and the collapsing alveoli it is trying to collapse whereas the stretching of the wall of the alveoli it's resisting the collapse as if the, if you think that the row of the boys they are standing they're holding their hand to each other together in a single row now one of the boy if he tries to go away from the row the it, he cannot go away because the other people who are holding the hand they won't allow him to go away from the row the same thing it is happening also the, because of the wall of the each alveoli are connected even this one is connected with this this one is connected with this and interconnected it helps from it resists this alveoli from collapsing this is called the alveolar interdependence so here we end the discussion about the mechanical properties of the lungs which helps the pulmonary ventilation and this is called the mechanics of lung. Thank you.